Ishkinotecha Yisrael. How good are your tents, O Jacob, your dwelling places, O Israel. It is with these words that Bilam, the prophet, attempted to curse the Jewish people, but instead he ended up blessing them. We're told that these words, Matovu Alecha Yaakov, are reference to the, the tents and the dwelling places, are the places of learning and the shuls. Bate Yeshiva, Bate Midrash, and the shuls that have been a source of great blessing for the Jewish people. And the question is, why do we use these words? In fact, Bilam was trying to curse the Jewish people. He was trying to wish upon them extinction. Why do we use these words? He was a wicked man. Norman Lamb, Rabbi Norman Lamb, who just passed away a few weeks ago, the great leader of, of American and world Jewry, explains that our challenge often in life is to extract a blessing from the curse. The challenges that we are faced with, we have to find the good within them. Here you had Bilam, he was really trying to curse us, but yet we were able to extract the good. He wanted us to become extinct, to be wiped off the planet. But through his words, and through the deep meaning of his words, we've actually not only been able to survive, but to thrive, to extract the blessing out of the curse. And here I am sitting in, in my beloved shul, Blake Street Hebrew Congregation. We just had a Mariv service with less than 20 people. We've been running services for the past few weeks under certain restrictions. And the shul is empty right now. And shuls all over the world are empty. We're facing a profound challenge, the Jewish people, which in many ways will dictate the future, the way we respond to what is going on right now. This year has been a challenge, and I think a lot of us were hopeful as the numbers started to lower that maybe, maybe just maybe we can find our way back and get back to a sense of normal. But of course, unfortunately in Victoria and really almost all over the world, we've seen an uptick in cases and infections. We're not even close to being out of this. And we are facing this drawn out curse. It seems like a curse in many ways, but our challenge is to extract the blessing out of it. I'm pretty confident that one day at some point we'll get back to shul and the shul will be filled once again and shuls all over the world will be filled once again but I'm not so sure it's gonna happen this year for Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. And I think all shuls all over the world are kinda of sweating a little bit, trying to think, man, what are we gonna do? What's Rosh Hashanah gonna be? What's Yom Kippur gonna be? Who can come, who has to stay? I mean, how do we work that out? It's a big mess, it's a big mess. And so there's a couple things I wanna say. My first message is to really each and every one of you in the deepest way possible and with the greatest love, and of course I'm saying it to myself as well. You know, we were faced with a challenge when it came to Pesach and people had to think about Zoom, you know, Sedarim and how do we include people and in running a Seder for the first time and then Shavuot, we had the, all these Tikkun, Leil, Shavuot, but beforehand and setting up things for people to learn on the evening, we adapted. And we're going to adapt, and we'll adapt to, to Tisha B'Av. And we must also adapt to Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. But our adaptation, adapting, begins now. Shuls will change forever. 
possibly. This year will definitely be different. But you and I have a responsibility right now to begin our own inner process of figuring out what we want for ourselves. What if I couldn't go to Shul Rosh Hashanah this year? What would that do? And how should I respond to it? Not on Rosh Hashanah, but right now. Right now. And for many of you who are not so consistent in your attendance of Shul and certainly not of late, I want to ask of you, what will your Judaism look like? didn't come to Shul in Rosh Hashanah, if you didn't come to Shul in Yom Kippur. And I'm not expecting us to know those answers, but we must begin asking those questions right now. We are faced with a great challenge where we do not know what Shuls will look like throughout this year, and yet who knows? But from this challenge, from this curse, if you will, we must extract the blessing the blessing that can only be generated within our own selves. We cannot rely on community. We cannot rely on the rabbi. You know, we got stuff online and it's great. There's amazing stuff going on online. But in the end of the day, when I'm standing here, here in front of you, Hashem, I'm standing in front of you. It's up to me. This is a moment of truth for us as individuals. This is a moment where we are being asked to be as real with ourselves and with God as we possibly can and to be as truthful as we possibly can. And my friends, it does not start in Elul. It doesn't start in Rosh Hashanah. It starts today. It starts today. This coming Thursday, we begin what is called the three weeks, the three week process, three week period of mourning from Shiva Sar Tammuz until Tisha B'Av, where we mourn the siege, historic siege laid around Jerusalem and the eventual destruction of the two temples on Tisha B'Av. We're moving into a period of sadness and reflection. And 2,000 years ago, when the temple, let's talk about the second Beit HaMikdash was destroyed, the second holy temple was destroyed, it was a traumatic experience like we could not possibly imagine. The whole center of the Jewish world, the whole center of reality, of what it was, Jerusalem, the temple, everything that we pray for, they had. And it was burned. And it was destroyed. And they were sent into exile. And they were kicked out. Imagine the trauma. How could they survive? How did they survive? And in those times, it was a curse. And the destruction of the temple in our times also is a curse. We live in a world without that wholeness and without that holiness and without that sense of purpose that we are told the temple brought into this world. But with time, maybe we can suggest that that destruction, that curse, turned into a blessing. Maybe. Maybe. Judaism clearly had lost its way in those days. The temple had become uh, kind of a cesspool of injustice and immorality. They had to change, and they did change. And Judaism, with its literacy, with its importance on education, spread out throughout the world, and Jews continued to learn, and we learned how to pray, and we developed the Siddur, we developed the prayer as it is in different ways of connecting to God, in ways that you and I, and not just those standing in the temple could, 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 could connect in a deep way, you and I can connect. And so it's over time, gradually, that Judaism evolved into what it is today. And so the destruction that existed while we mourn it and while it is tragic and while it is awful, nonetheless, it allowed with time to give birth to something else and maybe something even better. 
And so now, my friends, as we sit here in empty shuls, as we sit here in empty, empty halls of study, I believe it is an opportunity once again. It is an opportunity once again to recognize that maybe our, our prayer has become stale, our learning has become disconnected collectively. Maybe we aren't exactly connecting to what it is that we need to do. Maybe we have lost sight of the word of God that we need to bring into this world that is relevant for the world at this time. And so we're pushed away. We sit at home, we pray at home, we meditate at home, we learn by ourselves, we learn over Zoom, whatever. But we know it's not it. We know it's not it. And so maybe within this curse of, of absence, this curse of disconnect, there's an opportunity for each and every one of us to extract a blessing, for each and every one of us to demand more out of our Judaism, not from the rabbi. Leave the rabbi alone. We must demand it from ourselves. We must demand responsibility from ourselves to take this thing called life as seriously as we possibly can. <laughs> Siri just thought I was talking to her. I wasn't talking to you, Siri. I'm talking to you. <laughs> My dear friends, there's a curse upon humanity right now. How we respond to it will determine just what blessings we're able to bring into the world. And so my friends, I bless us all. Let's start getting ready. Hayom, 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 as we say in Rosh Hashanah and Yom Kippur. Hayom, 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 today, 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 as we say right now. Vani berov chastecha avo betecha Eshtachave el hechal kochecha biratecha. And I, with your abundant kindness, kindness, Vani Barov Chastecha Avo Beitecha, I will come to your house, Hashem. Blake Street's wonderful, but I want to come home. Eshtachave el hechal kochecha, I will bow down in the innermost chambers of your holiness. In awe, in deep awe and deep love of you, Hashem. May it come speedily and in our days. Shabbat Shalom.